Hey guys, Cobra DVS here, and um, hey, I don't know if you if you can tell, but I've uh, I've changed my room around a little bit. Um, I don't know if you saw the room tour that I did not uh, not too long ago, actually, uh, less than a week, about a week, something like that. Um, well, I've obtained another shelf over here. So uh, what what I've done is I've put mostly Nintendo here and mostly Sega and um, the other stuff here, but this is mostly Genesis and. Sega CD, Saturn, stuff like that. Um, so that's why it looks different. Um, I've changed a little things. I'll do a room tour at some point later in the year, but I don't want to do two so close to each other. Um, so anyway, down to business. This is a video um, that I saw. Uh, I've only seen one reply to it, but I've seen the original video too. Um, the original is by Games of War, uh, and the tag that I saw was by Ball and Nick 1992. Uh, excuse me, I saw Pete Doors uh, also done a tag. Uh, reply, um, and it's the rarest games that you own in your collection. Um, it's sort of a little video where you get to showcase some of the more prized possessions that you have. Um, and I think it's important to note, and 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 they've all mentioned this in their video, that it's not a bragging video. You know, you're not sitting here saying, you know, ha ha, I have this and you don't. It's just, you know, you're showing the things that you have that are rare and uncommon, because uh, that's why you collect usually to collect the. Uh, get the more hard to find stuff. That's why I do it. I know. That's that's what drives me. So um so I picked a few games for some most of my uh most of the systems that I play. Uh nothing before the NES. I don't have anything rare before that. I don't collect for anything pre NES much anymore. Um so this is all NES onward. Um let's see, the systems I've got out are um NES, Super NES, Genesis, Sega C D, Sega Saturn, um, and so on. So uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Well, we'll get started with the um, earlier stuff. Sorry about my chair. It's pretty creaky. Uh, but we'll start with the earlier stuff. Um, the NES. Some loose game cartridges here. And I'll try and note a, note a price that I think these are worth. Uh, it's not a guarantee, but it's, it's just what I think or what I've observed. Um, the first one is um, Rare um, in the United States. It's, it's not so much a rare game overseas uh, in the UK or, or Europe. Because um, it was a PAL-only release. Um, but when I heard about this game, I thought I might want to track down a copy. And it usually sells for... Um, I think I saw one sell for 80 uh, I don't know if that was here or in the UK. I forget which. But uh, it's a pretty hard game to find here. It's Ghostbusters 2. New Ghostbusters 2. Um, this is actually quite a bit different. Well, I'm not going to get it down from the Ghostbusters 2 that we most, most notably know. Uh, the one from uh, the AVGN video. That's a different game. This game is actually made by uh, HAL Laboratories. Laboratories. Uh, they made um, uh, the Low Low games, the Kirby games, um, Super Smash Brothers. They're involved with that. So uh, a great company. And this is a very fun game. Very fun game. If you have the chance to get that, go for it. Okay. Next are um, these ones are actually pretty uh, pretty hard to find. Um, a lot more than that one, I would say. Um, they're, they're NTSC releases, but, um, you know, they're still hard to get. And they're pretty expensive. The first one here is um, a late release. These are all late re releases. Uh, Mighty Final Fight. Uh, this game jumped up in price recently. I, I know I got mine for $10. Um, I saw another one for 25 at a gaming store. Recently, one sold on eBay for uh, $86, I want to say. And it was bids. It wasn't a buy it now. That was bidding. So, you know, that's a lot for this game. Um... So I'm happy to have gotten mine for $10. No complaints there. Um, and uh, let's see. Next are a couple of Konami releases. The first one is a game that was also on the Genesis and the Super NES, which is probably um, attributes to why this one is so rare or hard to find. It's Tournament Fighters, uh, Chinese Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Um, a lot of people don't know about this game. Um, if, and unless you're a collector, you probably don't. Uh, yeah, it's it's the third wheel on the uh, on the back. Tournament Fighters, you know, whatever. It's uh, definitely the weakest of the three because it's, you know, the NES version. Um, and it goes for a decent amount. I think it's over 50, around 60, somewhere around there for a cartridge. Um, and this last one is a personal favorite. Uh, well, not the game itself, but to have it in my collection is uh, one of my it's one of my favorite things in my collection. And it's Contra Force. This uh, completes my um, Contra um, collection on the, uh, on the NES. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. Uh, I got rid of Super C. I'm looking for a complete in box copy of Super C. Um, I have the first one complete in box. Uh, I'll probably never get this one complete because that's like 150 bucks. 
So um, I'll just have to do with the cart for now. All right, only only one box NES game that uh, I consider rare valuable. I mean, if you look behind me, you know, there's games back here that are worth a decent amount. Like uh, I know the Castlevania trilogy, you know, one, two, and three, complete in box, they go for a little bit. Um, I know Miss Pac-Man, the Namco version, that's kind of pricey. But there's really only one in there that stands out, and I, I think it's worth um, around 150. Uh, that's just a rough guess, but I think that's what it's worth complete in box, and it's the original Mega Man. Um, in very nice shape. Uh, it's in a nice protector. I got this from uh, Kepka 14. We did a we did a little deal for it. So this is probably my most expensive NES game. Um, it, you know, loose it goes for about 30, 25 or 30. Um, complete in box is a lot more hard, a lot harder to find. It's around uh, I think 150. The last I checked, uh, it's been a while. Okay, moving on. We'll start with the. Uh, I only have one Genesis game, so we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. This game um, went when. When I first started looking at it, it was around the fifty to sixty dollar range. I want to say. Uh, now I've seen complete copies sell for close to a hundred. Uh, I paid thirty for it. I uh, was really happy with that deal. Uh, and it's uh, Punisher, the Punisher on the Genesis, um, complete in box. Um, there's no tattoo actually. It comes with um, a free skull tattoo. Uh, I don't have that, but uh, actually those are not as hard to find as you would think. Um, so hopefully at, at one point I'll get it. Uh, but yeah, this game's jumped up in price uh, tremendously since uh, since I paid 30 for it. Uh, it's, it's usually around 100 now, a little less, uh, I, I think. Um, so I was ha I'm happy to have that for, uh, for for the price I paid. All right, now we'll move on to the Super NES. Now the Super NES is interesting because it's certainly the console I have the most expensive games on. Um, uh, I mean. I got them all at once, most of them, um, and you know, I've got like the Final Fantasies, uh, your Zelda, um, Breath of Fire 2, and those are all like $50 games, um, some of them are anyway, um, complete in box, some some even more, but they're not rare really, uh, Breath of Fire 2 is kind of rare, um, but like Final Fantasy 3, that's certainly not a rare game, so I, I don't feel like it's fair to show that, uh, but the ones I will show here, um, they are pretty rare. We'll start with the um, with the non RPGs, and then we'll go into the RPGs. Uh, the first one is actually one of my more expensive games. Um, period. It's a complete in box copy of Wild Guns on the uh, on the Super NES. Um, the box is in okay shape. It's a little faded, but um, it's uh, the card is very nice. The manual is pretty decent. Uh, oh, almost got worse. No, um, but yeah, I'm really happy to have this. I, I think um, in this condition, I'd probably say it's worth. Um, oh geez, put me on the spot. 150 plus would be just a guess. Um, so that that's a pretty hard game to find. That one is um, especially at a good price. Uh, next, I'm pretty sure this is not an RPG. Um, I'm thinking it's a side scroller. I've never played it, but I've heard it's a very good game. It's a Demon's Crest complete in box. I'm not too certain on this one. I think this one goes for around 100 now. Um, it's related to the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts series, I'm pretty sure. So, um, you know, I think it's 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 getting harder to find for sure. Um, the people seem to want to play it, so it's probably pretty good. Uh, worth around a hundred, as, as far as I know. Okay, basically the rest of them except for one are RPGs, but I'll, I'll save that for the last. Um, now this next game, uh, well actually both of them, the first one and the second one, are both pretty hard to find. The second one is significantly, significantly, well, not not significantly. It's it's, it's quite a bit more uncommon, expensive. Um, but the first one's no no uh, no no slacker itself. It's uh, Lufia, the Fortress of Doom. Um, I, I'm trying to think of uh, what a complete copy. And this this is in pretty decent shape. A little crushing to the box, but I'm I'm thinking it probably would go for sixty plus, seventy maybe. Um, complete in box. I I, I believe this has the. Uh, as the map too, uh, or or whatever it came with originally. Yeah, it's got like the attack map or the attack, all the stats and everything. So, so uh, yeah, I'd say 60 plus on the original Lufia. Uh, and then its sequel, Lufia 2: Rise of the Sinistrals. Uh, this is actually one that I've really wanted to play. Um, it's actually a prequel to the first one. Um, so, so I, I really want to give this one a try. I, so, I guess if I were to play them, I play this one and then that one because this is actually a prequel. Uh, but I might be better off playing that one anyway. Um, but yeah, this one is um, complete as well. This one's in a box protector. I don't want to get it out. But this one's complete. Um, 
I think this one goes for around 90 complete in box. Uh, this box is a little worn, but I think about 90 is a, is a fair, fair guess on that one. Okay, next are a couple more RPGs. Uh, the first one is part of a trilogy, a unknown, uh, un, un, um, confirmed trilogy, if, if you will. It's a uh, Soul Blazer. It's it's part of the um, it's uh, Illusion of Gaia and Terra Enigma, I believe. It's part of that trilogy. Um, I'm not 100% certain on the price of this one. I think it's close to 100 now for a complete in box copy with the map and manual, which this one has. Um, so I'm really happy to have this one. Um, I haven't played this. I, I don't play a lot of RPGs. I have a lot of them. I just don't play a lot of them. Um, but uh, this is one I'd like to give a shot. Illusion of Gaia is another one I have that I'd like to. I really like to play. All right, next is a, a classic that most people consider one of the best RPGs of all time. Um, I don't know if I can say that because I haven't really played it enough, but I can tell you it's an excellent game, and it's Chrono Trigger, complete in box. Um, this one has both maps, or posters, the instruction manual, the, the cartridge, of course. Uh, the box is in fair shape. Um, it's obviously been played, uh, but overall I'd say it's, it's decent. Uh, this game is, is interesting. If it, the, the, big, the, the big determiner determinant uh, on this one is like uh, the manual and the maps. I remember one time on eBay I was watching a, um, I'm going to set this down, I was watching a box only, but it came with the manual, it was everything but the game, the manual, the maps and everything, and I'm, I'm, not, cons I'm not certain on what it sold for, but I, I know it was over $100, which seemed ludicrous to me, um, because I was just looking to replace my box, because it's, it's a little rough, but I, you know, so I'd like to get a new one, but... Um, so they they pay I think it was like I want to say it was like 120 bucks for the, everything but the game, um, so I, that's what leads me to believe that the maps and the posters and all that are a huge uh, determining factor in, um, in 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 what the what the game sells for. Okay, so next are a couple loose games. Um, these are pretty expensive. Uh, this first one, the first one is a, I have a custom case for it. It's a Ninja Gaiden trilogy. This one sells for I think around 80 for just the cartridge. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think it's around 80. Um, complete, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I got this one at a garage sale. Um, cost next to nothing. It was like a dollar, I think. So um, so this was very, very, very good to have uh, for that price. And, um, you know, these games are... The thing about this is that the games are just getting more rare. You know, as people buy them up, less are out there. So, you know, they're getting more rare and they're getting more expensive. Um, and speaking of games that are getting more expensive... This game is astounding as far as its price. Everybody knows about this game, and I think most people will tell you the same thing. It's not rare. It's really not that rare of a game. Um, there are usually 25 or so of them on eBay at a time. Um, it's just in such demand that the it is uncommon. You know, don't get me wrong. It's not easy to find, but it's not super rare. And that's uh, Earthbound. Um, the the thing is, is just everybody wants to play it. I. Everybody wants to play Earthbound. I, uh, I've, I've not played this one yet. This is one that I, I'm going to play at some point. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of people say this is one of the best RPGs ever made. And I've also heard a lot of people say it's way overrated. Um, I guess I'll be the judge of that. I'm not much of an RPG player, so I'm kind of going into it with an open mind, which I think will help determine what I think of it without any bias. Um, but this game, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first got it, it was around, I think, a hundred, maybe one fifteen, maybe ninety. You, you could probably get it within within that range. Now it's not uncommon for this game to go for about a hundred and eighty, sometimes two hundred dollars. And if you have a complete in box copy, I mean, you're looking at over five hundred easy. Um, I don't have a complete in box copy. I'd love to get one at some point, and I, I'm sure it'll happen hopefully at, at one point. But um, as of now, I'm happy with just this. Um, and this game is going up in price in a hurry. Okay, so that's it for the Super NES. Um, that's just the best, some of the best stuff I have. I have more uncommon, pricey games, but uh, it's, I just I, those are those are the highlights I think. Um, so next we'll move on to um, one Sega CD game, and the Sega CD has a lot of, has kind of like a lot of rare games. You've got Snatcher, um, you've got Keo Flying Squadron, Lunar One and Two, Popful Mail. Um, I don't have anything to that caliber. Those games are pretty expensive and hard to find. But this game is—it's it, around forty bucks. Um, 
And you don't see them, you don't see it very often, so um, I'm happy to have it. It's Heart of the Alien, and this is a sequel to um, Out of This World. So, so I'm happy to have it. I paid a dollar for it, no joke. It was a dollar. Um, so, you know, it's not super rare, just more un uncommon. Which Sega CD games, like period, are uncommon to find in the wild. You know, they're 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 common online. You can find them anywhere. But in the wild, Sega CD games are hard to find. Uh, now, I tried to pick a uh, game for my 32X, so you can see my 32X games here, um, but I really couldn't do it. I guess the most expensive one I have is probably Knuckles Chaotix. Um, it's not so much rare, but it does go for a little bit. Uh, I didn't pull it out and put it out here, because it's, it's not super rare, uh, but I'm really happy to have it. It's probably my favorite 32X game. Um, and so we've covered the Sega attachments. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Saturn. Now I've got three games here. Um, pretty heavy hitters, I guess, in the Saturn library. The first one is, um, uh, I think an underrated game, to be honest with you. I, I think this game gets a little too much, um, a little too much hate that it doesn't deserve, and it's Mega Man 8 on the Saturn. Uh, this is the Anniversary Collector's Edition, which it includes exclusive Mega Man 8 art. So, um, I, I guess I would make this one a little bit better than this, the PS1 version. I guess I can't really say for sure. Uh, but the PS1 version is very common. It's 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 like a ten dollar game. Uh, this one is more around uh, eighty plus eighty eighty ninety somewhere in there uh, for a complete and box copy in, in very good condition, which which this one is thankfully um, in excellent shape. Uh, next is one of the best games on the Sega Saturn, and it's an exclusive, uh, and it's one of the re uh, few games that you can play um, online, or you used to be able to. I, I, actually, I think you still can. Um, but you have to do a lot of like like setting up and stuff for it. It's like really complicated, and I don't know um, how to do it. So it's uh, Saturn Bomberman. Uh, now this game is actually pretty hard to find, complete in box. Um, what I, I I had a, I got a pretty good deal on mine. Um, I paid under retail, no doubt about it. Um, I think it's probably worth around eighty or ninety. Um, I guess depending on condition, it could go upwards of a hundred. Um, I, I paid. Um, I think I paid 69 for mine, so about 70 bucks, uh, which I thought was a, f a fair deal at the time. Alright, so I'm going to skip over one game, and I'm going to just jump ahead. I have one sort of current game that's pretty rare, and it's for the original Xbox, and it's Jurassic Park uh, Operation Genesis. Um, and when you think of rare games, you really don't think of games that are, um, you know, on, on, on the Xbox. But they there do exist rare games for um, uh, current-gen last gen uh, system so uh, this is cool Th this game goes for around I think 80 bucks around 80 uh, maybe a little less or a little more I guess depending on condition um, and mine's in good shape everything's uh, in there so I got I got mine for 25 um, a, a while ago um, so I'm, I'm happy to have it and uh, it's actually a pretty cool game too it's like uh, imagine roller coaster tycoon with dinosaurs Alright, so um, now the last game that I'm going to show is, without a doubt, probably, as of right now, the most expensive game in my collection. Um, I picked it up earlier this year um, in an excellent pickups video that I had. Uh, I, I, I think I got a fair price on it. It was, it was a lot of money, but I, I think it was fair for this condition. Um, and, uh, yeah, as of right now, it is the rarest game I own. And it's on the Saturn, and it's Panzer, Panzer Dragoon Saga. Um, you know, this game's pretty leg uh, pretty pretty infamous among collectors. Um, it's around Earthbound. Uh, it's kind of like that, except it's a lot more rare than Earthbound. Um, I, I'm i trying to think. I, I know this was a very late-release Saturn game. I don't think it was the last. Um, in fact, I'm pretty certain it wasn't the last. But I think I heard a number online once that the reason this game is so rare is I think only 50,000 were made. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure I read that in an article. 50,000, which would make this uh, very rare. Um, that's, I mean, 50,000 in the United States. Um, we got 50, 50, um, 50 country, or states, so 50,000, that's 1,000 per state, which is uh, very few, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Panzer Dragoon Saga, that's my rarest game, most expensive. Um... So yeah, uh, that's that's it for me, guys. Uh, that's what I have. Uh, hopefully, I get more soon, because um, that's what I that's what I like. So um, yeah, check out Nick's video, Pete Doors' video, and of course the original video by Games of War. And until then, guys, take care.
some loose game cartridges here, and I'll try and note a, note a price that I think these are worth. Uh, it's not a guarantee, but it's, it's just what I think or what I've observed. Um, the first one is um, Rare um, in the United States. It's, it's not so much a Rare game overseas uh, in the UK or, or Europe, because um, it was a PAL-only release. Um, but when I heard about this game, I thought I might want to track down a copy, and it usually sells for... Um, I think I saw one sell for 80 uh, I don't know if that was here or in the UK, I forget which, but uh, it's a pretty hard game to find here. It's Ghostbusters 2, new Ghostbusters 2. Um, this is actually quite a bit different, well, I'm not going to get it down, from the Ghostbusters 2 that we most most notably know, two so close to each other. Um, so anyway, down to business. This is a video um, that I saw, uh, I've only seen one reply to it, but I've seen the original video too. Um, the original is by Games of War, uh, and the tag that I saw was by Ball and Nick 1992. Uh, excuse me, I saw Pete Doors uh, also done a tag uh, reply. Um, and it's the rarest games that you own in your collection. Um, it's sort of a little video where you get to showcase some of the more prized possessions that you have. Um, and I think it's important to note, and, and, and they've all mentioned this in their video, that it's not a bragging video. You know, you're not sitting here saying, you know, haha, I have this and you don't. It's just, you know, you're showing the things. Hey guys, Cobra DVS here, and um, hey, I don't know if you if you can tell, but I've uh, I've changed my room around a little bit. Um, I don't know if you saw the room tour that I did not uh, not too long ago, actually, uh, less than a week, about a week, something like that. Um, well, I've obtained another shelf over here so uh... What, what I've done is I've put mostly Nintendo here and mostly Sega and um... the other stuff here but this is mostly Genesis and Sega CD, Saturn, stuff like that um... so that's why it looks different, um, I've changed a little things. I'll do a room tour at some point later in the year but I don't want to do what you have that are rare and uncommon because uh, that's why you collect usually to collect the uh... get the more hard to find stuff that's why I do it, I know, that's, that's what drives me so, um, so I picked a few games for some, most of my, uh, most of the systems that I play. Uh, nothing before the NES. I don't have anything rare before that. I don't collect for anything pre-NES much anymore. Um, so this is all NES onward. Um, let's see, the systems I've got out are, um, NES, Super NES, Genesis, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, um, and so on. So, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And we'll get started with the, um, earlier stuff. Sorry about my chair, it's pretty creaky. Uh, but we'll start with the earlier stuff. Um, the NES, uh, the one from uh, the AVGN video. That's a different game. This game was actually made by uh, HAL Laboratories. Laboratories. Uh, they made um, uh, the Lolo games, the Kirby games, um, Super Smash Brothers. They're involved with that. So uh, a great company. And this is a very fun game, very fun game. If you have the chance to get that, go for it. Okay, next are, um, these ones are actually pretty, uh, pretty hard to find, um, a lot more than that one, I would say. Um, they're, they're NTSC releases, but, um, you know, they're still hard to get. And they're pretty expensive. The first one here is, um, a late release. These are all late re releases, uh, Mighty Final Fight. Uh, this game jumped up in price recently. I, I know I got mine for $10, 